it's day nine of the NaNoWriMo challenge and um, everything's going pretty well today. Uh, it's a nice, uh, it's not a nice, it's a rainy day. Strangely, I think I'd write quite well on rainy days. I guess there's no fewer distractions. Um, today, I'll make this very brief because I've got to, got to move on. Um, today was pretty good in the morning. I did um, uh, two sessions, both with almost 500 words each. So I've, I've got 892 words done today in two bursts of 25 minutes and 25 minutes, which is pretty, pretty good. Of course, in order to write in those 25 minutes, I've got to get my head in the right space. So it sometimes takes 15 to 20 minutes to, before I'd start the clock. But um, anyway, so uh, I've got my stuff written and um, I'm just finished my lunch and um, heading off to work. Uh, so it's a good feeling to have all the, all the stuff done in the morning. Anyway, I didn't want to talk about that. The writing is going well. The story, um, where are we now? Hannah Walker, ah, the cops are coming to get Hannah Walker. And um, it's uh, um, it's uh, heating up. Um, so yeah, I wanted to give a tip. I guess my tip is maybe obvious if you if you if you've done this before, but writing a novel, um, they talk about like a, the, the structure has to be triangular, um, something like that. I don't know. It gets very complicated, but um, the idea is that. Uh, it has rising tension. In other words, the drama and the most dramatic, or if you think about it, all the, the conflicts become more and more dramatic as the novel goes on. I'm now up to 32,000 and something words uh, of a 50,000 word novel, so I'm over the halfway mark, way over the halfway mark. And um, so now it's it should be getting pretty tense. And at some point it's going to flip into the third act and Hannah's going to turn the tables, excuse me, Hannah's going to turn the tables on the... On the situation but she's still building up to um, uh, more and more problems um, so you, you ratchet up the tension and um, what that means is you can't you can't have the most dramatic thing f f first off I mean you have a dramatic start but not it can't be the most dramatic thing because then everything else is a letdown if this is complicated to think about it it's, it's really not that complicated <laughs> um, just the way I'm explaining it just think of it like a play or a show um, you save the best till last or, or a rock show, you save your best songs till the end. They don't, you know, the stones don't come out and, well, actually they do come out and play Satisfaction, but they hold on to Satisfaction until the end, and then that's their encore, you know. It's the same with writing, you know, save your, your big numbers for the end. Anyway, the big numbers are starting to come now, so the tension has to rise, so the cops are after Hannah, she's on the run. And that's kind of fun to write, and I think that's maybe why I'm writing more and more quickly. Right, um, tip of the day is uh, to listen to some podcasts. There's a lot of writing podcasts out there. I, I could give a whole bunch. I mean, I've already mentioned um, Paul Teague's um, uh, self-publishing journeys. That's great. But uh, the other standard is probably Joanna Penn's uh, Creative Pen. The Creative Pen, Joanna Penn, P-E-N-N. That's probably the main writers and self-publishers podcast. She's British. There are a number of American podcasts, and I could, they are pretty good. Uh, I used to listen to quite a few, but I find that a lot of them sort of degenerate, and some English ones too, to be fair. I'm not slagging off the American ones. But a lot of them degenerate into just sort of sales pitches for their own products, um, which, you know, is permissible. I mean, um, they are doing it for free, and... Um, it, also, it is all part of marketing, and frankly, everybody's selling something. In a sense, I am too. I'm selling my novel, or maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really selling anything yet. But anyway, um, um, I, could bet I could recommend a few, but, but really, Joanna Penn is still, is still good quality and continues to be, although she still flogs a few of her stuff. Uh, the the, the, the signal-to-noise to ratio is definitely in the signal side than the noise. So that's Joanna Penn. Okay, today's quote. Rather than mangle a quote, today I'm going to read you from George Orwell's Why I Write. Um, and he gives, uh, how many? Six rules about good writing. This is very nitty-gritty stuff, okay? So it's useful, if I can read it. It's a bit dark in this room. Okay, you ready? Uh, number one, never use a metaphor, simile, or other figure of speech which you are used to seeing in print. Hmm. Number two, Never use a long word where a short one will do. Mm -hmm. 
if at all possible, if it is possible to cut a word out, always cut it out. Okay. Never use the passive where you can use the active. Mm, okay. Fifth, uh, never use a foreign phrase or scientific word or jargon word if you can think of an everyday English equivalent. And finally, number six, break any of these rules uh, sooner than say anything outright barbarous. <laughs> that's uh, George Orwell, and that's from um, his essay, not why I write, that's uh, Politics in the English Language, I think. Hold on, just flipping forward. Oh no, well, I've lost it. Anyway, I think Politics in the English Language. Right. Definitely, that's it. Um, good luck with your writing, um, good luck with the weekend. And um, I'll talk to you tomorrow.